What even is dynamic conditional correlation? Let's find out. Hey everyone, Tino here, aka The Dirty Quant. Welcome to another episode. So this is a bit of a follow on to the Garch episode that had a couple of weeks back. And it's really about using a dynamic um, you know, it's essentially trying to model the dynamics of something. And this is sort of similar to how volatility, how I've talked about how volatility usually gets, you know, you usually get a single number, then it's static. We can do the same thing with correlation. Usually people use the correlation function, whether it be in Excel or in Python, whatever it is. And it's just, again, that static number, which as we talked about before many times, you know, the copy to the Garch episode, that assumes that there's a linear relationship that doesn't change, right? So um, with DCC, dynamic conditional correlation, which I'll show you just now, we allow that relationship to evolve through time and hence why it's dynamic, right? And conditional because there's that time element which, uh, which makes a difference. So let's fire up a Jupyter notebook and then we'll uh, give you a couple of examples and hopefully it makes sense. Again, always like, subscribe, do the right thing. And uh, if you like what you see in this channel, maths, statistics, finance, all good things like that. And as always, I like to try to uh, explain these com concepts without using any formulas, because I think uh, there's really no point in such a short little episode. You're not really going to gain much by that. There's a lot of sort of Greek letters can be confusing. So I'll just give you the, the high level idea uh, and that hopefully can sort of bring you on your way. You can do your own sort of self study with, uh, with the book. All right, let's go. All right, dynamic conditional correlation. What is it and why should you care? So like I mentioned earlier, it's really about um, understanding that there is an evolution in the way that a uh, the dynamics really, really change. So, you know, correlation, we're all familiar with that concept, I guess, um, what it sort of means that, you know, how tied the relationship is between sort of two or more, uh, two or more variables, right? But we just always assume that that number is static, it's fixed. Uh, and that also could mean that there's more or less relationship during a certain event or a certain type of movement. So maybe there's actually more correlation in the tails, right? So when, uh, you know, markets going up, you know, things sort of maybe don't have really too much of a relationship, but it could be that when, so, you know, like a COVID event, everything sort of converged and everything went down. So all of a sudden, all that correlation just sort of converged to one, right? And um, it would probably take quite a long time for a typical unconditional correlation, just, you know, your typical just you know, dot correlation, whatever you're using to, to catch up to that, right? So your, your models aren't well, not going to be quick enough to, to adapt to it. Um, this is a, a really nice, it's a parametric model. So it means it does have some parameters governing it because obviously you could just use like a weighted uh, or, you know, exponentially weighted model, something like this. But then again, what value do you use for that weight? You know, that memory function with this, we do calculate it, we do optimize it. Uh, and so you, you have, um, you have something that is tuned exactly for that uh, that relationship, right? So, look, um, so not going to go through too much of the of the um, of the formula. So, what we're actually going to do here is not the correlation of the returns, but actually correlation of the volatility, just to make it extra extra difficult <laughs> first time to understand. But um, again, always going back to my my previous videos, there's characteristics of volatility um which are favorable to to correlation right so um it, ma it makes sense to just sort of just do the correlation of that rather than correlation of returns at this stage i'm not using any packages story for another time um i like to write my own uh, of these things so you know exactly what's you know what's going into them um plus i really i think you understand them a lot better when you write your own right so you can copy this, find your own package as you wish. I didn't really find a good DCC package anywhere, so I thought I'm just write my own, right? All right, too easy. So let's go ahead. Here is all of it, a lot of matrix uh, operations and beautiful. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually download some uh, data from um, S&P 500. So using this cheeky little query here, goes and pulls the current members of the S&P 500 past uh, 10 years of returns and that's our starting point right so uh, I'm just going to do that look there is sort of bias here because I'm not looking at the members in time I'm just looking at the members today so there's survivorship bias but 
it doesn't really matter for this we're not back testing we're just having we just need some raw data right all right too easy so that's gone ahead and downloaded it beautiful we're just going to get the returns and what we're going to do is um we can just run run garch on them right so i'm just going to run garch on the, on the top five of them i don't need all 500 it's it's, it's way too much data i'm just going to run the top five right so we're just going to set up our dcc model uh, and run it on the top five security so all we're going to do is a couple of constraints here what the minimum maximum values are again look we don't need to go too much into it but pretty much you have two values for your for your dcc model and we want some bounds right so pretty much look, it doesn't fail that often so but still we want to sort of help the optimizer as much as possible beautiful so we're just gonna run this uh, minimization function and it should run pretty quick under sort of a five second or so i think we're just running it on yeah five beautiful okay seven seconds quick enough uh success true and these are the parameters so i'll just make that bigger for you um that parameter that the alpha and the beta that's really your your 092 here that's really your memory parameter right similar to gart you sort of how much of the past um do i do i use in calculating tomorrow's and this is essentially your your shock parameter so how much today do i use usually uh, tend to sort of add up very very close to one log likelihood function um take it or leave it on its own doesn't really make much sense only really useful when you're comparing various models um here what we're going to do we're just going to run that dcc on um on all of it and these are just my stock names all right cool so let's actually look at some data right so we've got an um, abb and a so obviously like all correlation there's always the 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 possibility of getting spurious correlation right i mean any two pieces of data there's there's bound to be some of value so there has to be like what they usually call it, like an economic meaning behind that relationship um because if you're gonna get i don't know uh, a taiwanese like chip maker and then you're gonna get like a, a south american like i don't know um fruit exporter look there's no real reasoning why there should be too much of a correlation between them long term short term you might see or see some patterns but anyway Looking at looking here, this is essentially the um, the DCC plot, and you can essentially see how that correlation evolves through time. So look, there's a lot of data here. Let's really narrow it down. There was one that was interesting, A, B, B, V, and A. So we're just going to pick this one here, and these are uh, AbV and A Agilent technology, which are both uh, in the sort of pharmaceutical game, right? So looking at this. We sort of hover around that sort of 45 level uh, and then in March 2020, you know, COVID really sort of struck that they sort of started to converge, you know, so that correlation spiked all the way to sort of up to sort of 0.6, right? And that's really what DCC is about is having that number that does evolve with new information. When you feed it new information, um, it's reflected right away. So this is really the, the point of it. And... Um, and similar to Garch, it also has a forecasting ability. Uh, it does obviously converge to a long-term value, but you can, it inherently does one step forward um, forecasting. You can actually do multi-step forecasting in terms of where's that correlation going, right? So if we just run looking at the correlation, so we've got uh, what we said, A and ABB, ABV, look at these two what we what we're looking at here is that those both of those correlations really getting um you know spiking up to some pretty high numbers contemporaneously at the same time right so that's really what we're picking up and it's the correlation of this remember it's not the correlation of the returns it's the second moment uh, volatility and this is what we are picking up here so this is the garch condition of volatility right this is actually quite an interesting scatter plot i've actually never seen anyone do this before i'm sure there's it's quite hard to be original uh, on the internet or anywhere else these days, right? Uh, I'm going to call this uh, maybe a grenade plot. But what it does, it shows you the evolution of um, the volatility of one security against something else. So if you plot a path down here, right? So this one down here saying A uh, remained quite low while ABBV, that, that volatility actually spiked, right? So it's saying, well, there isn't actually much correlation during that time so one actually had some sort of event which led um, you know caused a lot of volatility but the other one didn't spike 
if they were happening together, you should sort of see a 45 degree line, which is what we are seeing here, right? We're seeing both values spike up at the same time. Um, it's really unfortunate this doesn't have the date as uh, one of the overlays. I might actually see if I can pop that in, but I'm going to bet your bottom dollar that it's going to be this event here, March. Um, and actually do this, have a look at here. What's the highest number? 103.87, 103 there, 87, did we pick it up? Yeah, I'm sure it's there, just behind it. So anyway, it, it's it's there, right? So this is what I'm expecting to see. When that correlation go, goes up uh, together, I should be seeing a 45 degree line. The same as this, you know, this sort of vertical line here. A, shot up, while ABBV, nothing really happened there. It's an interesting plot, never really seen this before. Um, I'm sure someone else has come up with it for me. All right, Tui. So this is just the sort of looking at the returns. What did the actual returns? Because volatility, I mean, it doesn't really show, tell you what the returns do. So let's look at A and ABBV. Let's turn both of them on. Okay. So I'm obviously, there's this obviously a trend of them going up, but this is where we saw that volatility spike. Obviously, returns were um, highly negative, but this sort of happened at the same time, right? So um, pretty interesting to have a look at this. Um, if we look at the unconditional correlation, that's your traditional bread and butter correlation. Look, I'm just using dot core here, straight up from pandas. We see it's about 43 and that's that's really what it is, just an average, right? So if we let's go back, actually, let's have a look down here. I think this is little, if we look at ABBVA, beautiful, look at that little widget. All right, cool. So we've got the DCC, dynamic conditional correlation and core, which is your unconditional correlation. And that red line is just a straight line through everything. So it's just really an average and it expects that relationship to always be maintained. Um, it's always linear, always be maintained, wherever actually you get times where you know it can fall below 0.3, uh, 0.35, and then even spike up to sort of 0.6. Um, so that's really, really it. The, you know, the purpose of sort of DCC is to do, um, you know, you can actually incorporate it with Garch, incorporate it with Copula is actually really, really flexible. I don't think the mass is too horrendous um, and you can find some sort of good packages or again, you can find this one on my GitHub page. Uh, link is below in the description. Just have a play with the notebook, see how I sort of built it and compare it to sort of some of the formulas. Um, but that's sort of pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Catch you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.